Well, I think it's extremely important that the whole world remembers. And like they said, that's the basis upon which, you know, future situations like this will hopefully not happen again. And I personally, uh, through former generations, lost family, you know, not directly, but great grandparents. And so it'll certainly always be on my mind. And I'm thrilled to see so many people here, that, um, especially the young ones that, like they say, can promulgate the remembrance and uh, carry it on for future generations. And that's very important. I was, along with the director of this library, we were over, overthrown by the amount of people here. She set up for probably half this many people. So it was a real tribute to the event, to the whole idea of the Holocaust to see this. So I was very proud, very happy. Uh, Shannon Gavin, Rosary High School in Fullerton. Uh, I teach social studies, and we have an elective semester class on the Holocaust itself, an in-depth study on the Holocaust. Um, it's something that I find the students think they know about, but they don't really. You know, in their regular history classes, we'll cover World War II, but it's never, we never have enough time to really get into it. It's something they're fascinated with, um, but they don't really necessarily know all the details. And I think it's really important, it's an important thing to remember. You remember so you honor, you remember so that in the future things don't get bad and, and people can see the warning signs of, um, of, of these possible things that could happen. You know, that any time there is unchecked power, there is abuse of power. And it's important for people to understand how much difference one person can make just by standing up. And we are, live in a society that is all about conformity most of the time, you know follow the rules, do what you're told. It's important to have the skills to recognize when those things can go awry. All right. Um, my name is Linnea Holberg. I am a senior at Sonora High School. And I'm here to view the exhibit um, as part of an IB um, History of Americas course. Um, um, I really, I think this is incredible. Um, I find the Holocaust very important. And um, I appreciate that people put out such an effort to um, keep it known and to make sure that people continue to remember it. Um, I personally really enjoyed the exhibit. Um, the pictures are incredible. Um, the different comments and quotes that have been on, on the different posters are really, really um, eye-opening and um, just good to keep in mind. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, hi, I'm Obed Valencia. I'm from Sonora High School. I'm a senior and um, I'm also here as part of the IB uh, History Seminar class. Um, with my teacher and uh, I think it's important because uh, it's necessary to deter prejudice and terrorism caused by the uh, denial of the occurrence of the Holocaust. We are grateful to have you all here today. If there's an empty seat, grab it. Uh, young folk who we really like having here today. It's very special to us that so many young people are here today because this is what this exhibit is all about. Not the old guys like myself, but all of you who need to know about this because you are the torch bearers for the next generation. Being the torchbearers, may I invite you to have a place on the floor, <laughs> just so that you might be a little bit more comfortable. So don't hesitate to do that, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to begin, if I may have your attention, please, with a presentation of the colors by Boy Scout Troop 871 and Girl Scout Troop 749 and 1099. Let's welcome the Boy and Girl Scouts, please, and have them here. Our first speaker of the day, 
And everyone, come on in. There's room on the floor here. Wherever you feel comfortable, settle down. Fantastic. OK. Just leave a little path so the speakers can get up and down. But otherwise, let's get them all in. OK, here we go. Our first speaker of the day was going to be Congressman Ed Royce, who was, for very understandable reasons, called away to Washington, DC. I think he had a meeting today with the president at the White House over a subject which is very much in people's minds at the moment. So we're sorry that Congressman Royce cannot be here. But let me say that Kim Young, from his assistant, is going to read a few words and say a few words to us from the congressman, and we're very grateful to have her. Thank you for inviting me to say a few words on behalf of Congressman Ed Royce, and he sends regrets for not being able to join you today at this very, very important event. As you heard, he was called at the last minute to join a meeting at the White House to discuss the situation in Syria. And tomorrow, as chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, he will be chairing a congressional hearing to assess the uh, and assess and weigh the Obama's uh, Obama administration's response to the situation. But this event, Holocaust exhibit of the Simon Wiesenthal Centers, the Courage to Remember, is an important event which he didn't want to miss. So he asked me to come and say a few words on his behalf, and I'm very honored to do that. It's very moving to see this crowded room, students, communities, the leaders in all sectors coming together to witness this historical exhibit. Especially because Congressman A. Royce's father is a veteran of World War II, and he served from Normandy to Austria as a forward observer in a unit that was the eyes and ears of the 15th Corp artillery, the 1st, 3rd, and 7th armies. Trust me, having worked with Congressman Royce for over two decades, I have come to know Ed Royce Sr. very closely. As a GI in Patton's 3rd Army, Ed Royce Sr. had the historic duty to liberate the concentration camp that you are all too familiar with. Dachau. On that fateful day in late April 1945, Edroy Sr. documented the Nazi regimes, the atrocities against humanity, taking picture after picture of the cruelty surrounding him. Several of you heard this is how Congressman Royce first came to learn about the genocide. When Edward Sr. cut through Germany and finally liberated the concentration camps at Dachau, he had his brother's camera and documented the ovens filled with bodies stacked like cordwood, the rail cars and trenches filled with Hitler's innocent victims. I brought an album that contains some of those photos taken by Edward Sr. His collection continuously serves as a reminder of what happened. Pictures capture moments that words cannot describe. The painful lesson that he learned as a young man was all too clear. The potential for evil in this world is all too real. It is mind boggling that Holocaust denials remain to this day and worsen that genocide continues. I would like to read a letter written by Ed Roy Sr. that was printed in the letter to the editor section in a local newspaper. The subject is, the evidence of the Holocaust is clear. I can understand the incredulity of people who doubt the organized killing of millions of Jews, Poles, and others in the concentration camps in German-occupied Europe during the Hitler era. I could hardly believe my own eyes on seeing Dachau immediately after its liberation in 1945. 
I saw the heaps of clothes in front of the building with bed, also known as bath, painted on the door, the shower heads that pumped in deadly gas instead of water, the room filled halfway to the ceiling with naked bodies, and the room with ovens for burning the bodies. There was an entire train load, hundreds of emaciated bodies on a nearby rail spur. Evidently, they had starved to death on the train. In addition, there were hundreds more housed in the barracks who were so starved their survivor was questionable. This was one day at one camp, and there were many such camps scattered throughout Germany and Poland. So when I meet people who doubt the Holocaust, I show them the photos I took that day, and I welcome you, and I'm gonna pass this around so you can look through it. I also have real photos here that are made copies and put in the album. And this was signed by Edward D. Royce from Stanton. The Holocaust left a lasting stain on world history. To remember and continue awareness of the events that transpired takes real courage. To face painful truth that not only the individuals affected feel, but generations after still reflect on today. So to this end, I want to commend the work that the Simon Wiesenthal Center is doing. Rabbi Cooper in particular, to sound the alarm of this troubling global trend. In this display right here in La Habra, the theme of courage to remember ensures that this moment in history is not forgotten or denied. If anyone tries to claim that the Holocaust did not happen, I only ask you to look at the photos. These are the vivid proof of the atrocities that occurred. We shall never forget. Thank you for having me here. You know, Congressman Royce is chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, a committee with extraordinary responsibility for, among other things, U.S. relations with Israel and the Middle East. And he's playing a very strong and thoughtful role and we should all be proud that he's a congressman for this district right here, La Habra. I am a college teacher by training. I typically speak in 55-minute increments, followed by an exam. <laughs> However, I don't think I'm going to use 55 minutes today. In fact, I'm just going to use a few seconds because it's warm in here and we have quite a few speakers. Let me just tell you a bit about the exhibit the exhibit was created for the 50th anniversary of the Anschluss, for that moment in history when Hitler marched into Austria, united Austria with Germany, and fundamentally kicked off the Second World War. Uh, this exhibit opened in Vienna, toured all the great capitals of Europe. The exhibit has also been seen throughout Asia. Two and a half million people have seen it in Japan. It's been seen in Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, um, uh, Mumbai, uh, uh, Delhi, uh, uh, I can't tell you the number of cities that it's appeared in Asia. Very important because of the rising power of Asia and the fact that many people in Asia know very little about Western history and especially about the Second World War and the Holocaust. Because the Simon Wiesenthal Center is a fixed asset, a wonderful museum, the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles. If you haven't been there, you should go there. I urge you to do that. U.S. and News and World Report uh, lists it as one of the six must-see museums in the United States. But because it's a fixed installation, the Foundation for California, my foundation, has taken it on the road to schools and police stations and hospitals and libraries up and down the state of California uh, on the east coast of the United States. I believe that uh, shortly Rabbi Cooper and uh, Ted Gover, who many of you know, will be opening it in Manila in the Philippines at the beginning of November. So we are delighted to have a role in this. I also want to mention that our donor who has made this all possible, SNCF, the French National Railway, there are two panels about it because they deported 76,000 Jews during the Holocaust, but have made every effort to come to terms with their past 
in addition to which they are deeply engaged in uh, remembrance and Holocaust education, and they've made it possible for us to bring this to you. Please. I'm not going to. It's really my special honor to introduce the La Habra mayor, Rose Espinosa, who I met coming in, and uh, we're really delighted to have her. Your Honor, please. Good afternoon. Oh my gosh, there are so many people here. Thank you very much. I knew it would draw out this amount of people. It always does every time I've gone to other locations in your Belinda to hear a Holocaust survivor at the library. And it's always moving to hear. So anytime I get the opportunity and I hear of this happening, taking place somewhere else, uh, it's a must for me. And to take as many children as I can to hear the story as well. So thank you for being here. There are so many elected officials, but I will introduce the ones here from La Havre, Mayor Pro Tem Tom Beamish, <laughs> Council Member Tim Shaw, Council Member Jim Gomez, and Council Member Mike Blaisley. And for many people, uh, excluding the young individuals here, the subject of history is nothing more than a dusty study of days gone by, something to be endured while awaiting noon lunch hour. Uh, this is truly unfortunate for those individuals failed to appreciate the history that history is much more than a simple record of dates, names, and places on maps. It is a remembrance, a recollection of the world as it truly was. It recounts what our forebearers saw, what they thought and how they felt, and serve as a record of their experiences. Just as those who came before us had the responsibility to share their memories of the past, we too bear a solemn obligation to share that history with those that follow our footsteps. Today we gather to remember a darker chapter in our collective history, the Holocaust. As we move farther and farther in time away from the terrible event, a number of people who can share their experience of the Holocaust become fewer and fewer. People who were very young when the Holocaust occurred are now themselves grandparents or even great-grandparents. As time continues to its constant march forward, exhibits like the courage to remember become that much more important, providing a forum for all of us to learn and remember and honor those that were lost. I am pleased to be here today with my colleagues and all the other elected officials and everyone here and all the residents of La Habra and beyond. We are grateful to the Simon Wiesenthal Museum of Tolerance, the Foundation of California, the Orange County Public Library for bringing the courage to remember to La Habra. And we have as well a small token of our gratitude. We have proclamations for each of those organizations to recognize their leadership to their commitment to the preservation of history and to congratulate them on opening this exhibit and helping us to remember and honor those who were lost during the Holocaust. With that, I'd like to present to the Simon Wiesenthal Center, Center a proclamation. We are going to get Rabbi Cooper up here in a moment. Like the Red Sea, if you will part that. <laughs> Thank you for bringing Thank this to so our much. community. So it's truly important for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone. And we'd also like to have the Foundation of California. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor, for coming. As well, to the Orange County Public Library. Is Jill here? There she comes. There we go. Thank you very much. And I, I, I'm honored that you are all here. And I'm hoping that you'll stay cool in one way or another. <laughs> thank you. Listen, thank you so much for the wonderful turnout uh, from the city of La Habra, from the council. It's just great, and we really appreciate it. Our, uh, our next speaker is Orange County Supervisor Sean Nelson from District 4. This is his district. Sean is a vigorous, thoughtful, dynamic leader on the County Board of Supervisors. Uh, I read about him a lot. I like what he says. Well, not everything, but 90% of it. <laughs> And he's a person with a great future in our county. And so I'm so delighted that he can be here today. Supervisor. 
All right. Well, in the spirit of keeping it cool and keeping it brief, as I see everybody fanning behind me, listen, it's my privilege as the chairman of the Board of Supervisors. This is a county library. And what better place for an exhibit to teach than a house of learning? a place where people go to be informed, uh, to light that bulb in their head, to learn about something they didn't know. As many of you kids get uh, the opportunity to go through this, let it soak in. My grandparents, both of my grandfathers fought in the war. We didn't have to go far to find out what happened or to understand the significance. Uh, that's changing. And fortunately, with this exhibit and uh, others like it, the opportunity to instill this lesson in humanity, but certainly into our young people, is not lost, and it's so critical uh, that it continue on. I do want to thank Jill, who was just up here uh, on behalf of the county. She is our staff member, but she's the boots on the ground here to help coordinate with uh, the sponsors, and also for the sponsors you've heard them mention, but the Foundation for California, the Simon Wiesenthal Center, and uh, I did not realize that SNCF was the French Railroad, but. Uh, very generous of them to address uh, their opportunity to make do for some past sins of their own. Uh, thank you very much. There are over one million people have seen this exhibit, it's my understanding. Uh, it's a privilege. This is my district, but for Orange County to host this, it is significant. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll just take this opportunity uh, for the foundation. We were experts at giving away beautiful looking parchment paper, but it is our privilege, and thank you for bestowing it, the privilege on us to enjoy the exhibit and to learn from it and to appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker, well, our next speaker is somebody who I want to take a moment to praise. Jill Patterson is manager of the La Habra Library. She's been spectacular. Yeah, come on. Yay. She has been spectacular to work with. Every need we had, she's met, she's worked hard with us, with our staff. She's made this all work and come together wonderfully well. Seldom do we get such support from the local community or a local institution as we've gotten from Jill. So Jill, we are very grateful. Thank you very, very much for all you've done. And please come up here and say a few words. Well, I was not surprised at the outpour of support I received because La Habra is known as the caring community and the staff I have is exemplary. We got approval for this uh, exhibit two days before I left for a week in New York, kind of vacation. Um, and my staff was in charge of sending out all the publicity to the schools, to the media, every place. And when I got back the emails, they copied me and the subject line was faster than a speeding bullet. My staff is definitely faster than a speeding bullet. Uh, Kathy Gillette, our children's librarian, has a lot, and I want to thank her specifically, as well as Kathy Hickel and Anna um, Dale. So, libraries are, some people think of us as warehouses and storehouses of knowledge and books, but I prefer to think of us as distributors of everything, all kinds of information and books and DVDs and magazines, and consider us also shareware because we now have ebooks and e-audio that we can download. Uh, if you have a library card, you have the world. And I know all of you are hot here, but come, my grandmother would say, you think this is suffering? <laughs> I can tell you about suffering. Uh, <laughs> she came to this country from the Ukraine as a young woman in the early 1900s um, and lost her family during World War II. Uh, they were in Kremenchug, uh, which was occupied by the Nazis. 90% of the buildings were destroyed during the war and most of the Jews were killed. So I've lost most of my family on that side and never knew them. So this history is very real to me. And the, having this Holocaust exhibit is such an honor. It was a joy to work with everybody to get this uh, happening. Our mission as a county librarian is to enrich and empower the community. And I want to thank both the foundation and the Simon Wiesenthal Center for allowing us to further promote our mission by holding, hosting this exhibit. Thank you so much. We're making good progress. Our next speaker, much like a college professor, is a rabbi. So we're all so used to just talking in, 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 uh, at length, but it's my great pleasure, really my great pleasure, to introduce Rabbi Abraham Cooper, who is the Associate Dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center. Uh, Rabbi Cooper and I have traveled the world opening this exhibit in capitals uh, throughout Asia and elsewhere. Uh, he is a fighter for those things he believes in. He's a man of consummate energy and uh, it's very special for me to call him friend, and I'm very grateful that he's here today. Rabbi? Well, 
Thank you, friend. Uh, you may notice that I have not taken off my jacket. This is all the more interesting because when you come see me in LA, I don't even wear one at my desk. So take it as a very good sign that I kept the jacket on to remind myself two things. Yes, I'm an ordained rabbi. It's really hot in here. So I want to keep, try to keep it as short as possible. Really two points that I want to uh, focus on. In this room right now, this is a room of opposites. The exhibit is about hopelessness. The people here, especially the young people, as well as the stakeholders, the law enforcement, the elected officials, they're about hope. The pictures that you're going to look at are about hopelessness and powerlessness. Democracy is about power. And when I look around and see the young people of Orange County coming out to this exhibit, it's now since 1988, as Dr. Ballas had said, um, later on when you come back and have a chance to look at these uh, photos a lot closer, you're going to see an evolution of evil from bullying to hateful words to hateful propaganda to political power to genocide. What you're going to find as you grow up about everything is that major events don't happen overnight. There are many points along the way that you and I, especially in democracies, can change things if we have the guts to stand up and do something about it. It can be inside a Cub Scout, it can be in a classroom, it can be in a board meeting. So we'll be looking back in history to the Holocaust and we'll be hearing from a survivor, a good friend Elaine. But the messages here of the people whose names you may not even be able to pronounce are very relevant to everyone who's sitting here. 1988, this brings me to my second and last point, was also the year of Saddam Hussein's gassing of thousands of his citizens in Kurdistan, mostly in a town called Halabja. After that took place, most people around the world, most political leaders, most religious leaders did not say anything. Who are the Kurds? You spell it with a K or a C, a Q, who knows? Saddam Hussein, it was before the Gulf Wars. We didn't know much about Iraq or what the difference was between Iraq and Iran. But one man, Simon Wiesenthal, the man after whom our institution is named, he was a victim of the Holocaust, he was an architect before World War II, he said the following. He said, you know, the world is making a terrible mistake. Because when evil people do such deeds and everyone else is silent, the bad people are going to draw their own conclusions. Can anyone in this room imagine what would have happened to our history if there was a coalition of the willing back in 1988 to put a stop to Saddam Hussein back then when he was attacking with poison gas his own innocent citizens? I had the opportunity as a rabbi to stand before the mass grave of 5,000 Muslims in Halabja. And believe me, it's not easy to think of an appropriate prayer to say when you're in the presence of such horror, of such evil. So it's also appropriate that today there's one person missing from this room, Congressman Ed Royce. You know why? He's exactly where he should be today. He's at the White House in our imperfect democracy, discussing with his colleagues and the president, what are the leaders of the civilized world going to do after we've seen 100 YouTubes of Syrian children gassed to death? There are no easy answers. The world and life is very messy. Courage to remember is exactly that. We believe in our Jewish tradition that if you have the courage to look back, you have the basis to look forward to a great future. God bless you all. 
Madam Mayor, thank you for having us, members of the City Council, the diplomats who were here, uh, Kvot HaRav, and especially those people who are in uniform here today and those who are not who keep us all safe. God bless you all. Our next speaker is someone very, very special. Elaine Geller is a survivor of a concentration camp. We never do a program without having a survivor with us to remind us in person of the history that we will watch, look at on these panels. She was, I think, four years old when she was taken to the concentration camp. She was liberated when she was eight years old. She reminds us that she's one of the youngest survivors still today. The average survivor's age is 83, I believe, and 100 survivors a day die. We haven't got much time left to learn from them. So especially right now, let's make that effort. Let's all give her our deepest attention. Elaine, please. My name is Elaine Norwich Geller, and I'm going to try and be very brief. My story is uh, unique and not unique. I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you how I feel in the presence of this audience. And I'm honored to be part of, of this program. When I look at the photographs or the news of what's going on in the Middle East, I remember Bergen Belsen. I remember dead bodies. I remember hiding. I lost my mother early on. I, I mercifully was very young. I'm not sure when I realized that. But what I'm here about and what this group is and what the Simon Wiesenthal Center has taught me is that you, the young people in this audience, you know, when I travel, even on my own, and I'll say, I, I wouldn't come here before the Holocaust. Why, say young children? Well, we were afraid of Christians. I'm going to bet that the majority of this audience are Christians. You are the hope of tomorrow, and so are we. All young people are the hope of tomorrow. And it doesn't mean going to war necessarily or not going. I'm not giving you my political view. I'm telling you that you are the artists, the architects of tomorrow. And don't tell me that it's only a word. I can make you cry and sing with word. I will die with the Holocaust on, on my heart and in my face. What to do with it was my decision. What do I do with this knowledge? I can hide. I can cry. I do that plenty. But what I am looking for and seeing here today is more than a million, million miracles could do. A crowded room of people of all faiths and color honoring a piece of history from which we must learn. We must learn that we can make a difference by speaking up. And I am honored to be a part of this organization that the Simon Wiesenthal Center has afforded me to be here. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I was liberated in Bergen Belsen. I was and I came on the very first boatload of refugees to come out of the Holocaust and for many years didn't speak about it. I'm speaking now. I'm grateful now. I beg of you to speak up when there is injustice. Thank you all very much. When this program is over, Elaine will be happy to talk to any of you or all of you. Do a little bit at a time, please, about her experiences. We're really honored to have uh, uh, a representative from the State of Israel, the Jewish State. The Israeli Deputy Council General, Dr. Yuri Resnick, is going to speak to us today. He will share some words uh, that I think are very important because his country is right in the midst of the firing line from every direction, and it's so important to hear what he has to say about memory, the Holocaust, and today. Thank you. We're on the eve of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which begins the days of awe, ayamim anuraim. And this in Jewish tradition is a time for introspection. It's a time to reflect on the past, the past year and the past years, in order to draw lessons for the future. And in Jewish history, our past has much to be proud of and to reminisce positively on. 
from intellectual achievements and from being introducing foundational ideas of ethics and monotheism to scientific uh, contributions over the centuries, we really have much to be proud of. But Jewish history also has much calamity in it, persecutions and expulsions and the sorts of persecution that culminated in the 20th century in the Holocaust when a third of our people, six million people in total, were destroyed uh, by the Nazis and their collaborators. And the past has always competed with the present. It's not easy to have the courage to draw the lessons of the past. We all have our lives, we have present exigencies, we have national interests and personal interests, there's the economy, there are jobs, there's unemployment, there are personal lives and our collective lives. So it's not easy to draw the lessons of the past. But this is where courage comes in. We have to have the courage to draw the lessons of the past, because if we don't, the sordid facts of history and the darkest moments of history will come back to haunt us. And if there's one constant in history as we look back, it is that ruthlessness, uh, ruthlessness by those who carry it out against the defenseless uh, continues when it is not stopped in its tracks. And for anyone who has any doubts, it's enough to think and contemplate about the images that we saw coming out of Syria in recent weeks, or if we think a little bit further afield of uh, Iran and its program for weapons of mass destruction, its nuclear weapons program, and its clear intent, express intent, not only to deny the Holocaust that occurred, but to build the means of perpetrating a second Holocaust. Now, in World War II, a coalition of the free world led by the United States was able to muster the courage, the determination to eventually vanquish those forces of evil. Now, it was too late for six million Jews who perished in the Holocaust. But for the survivors and for the free world, this was vital. And it's certain that the world would be an entirely different place today had, uh, had the free world then not had the courage and the determination to make those sacrifices and to take those difficult decisions. So let us all pray that we have the courage to remember and that we have the courage to ensure that these memories prevent and safeguard us from the sorts of horrors that we saw in the Holocaust from ever happening again. Thank you. We have, and we're honored to have, a proclamation by the city of Cerritos, presented to us by Cerritos Mayor Bruce Barrows. Who had to leave because he had a city emergency, so he wanted to Please. present that to the uh, Foundation for California with his thanks, um, the emergency that just happened. And I know there are other people that have proclamations and certificates they want to give as well. Good, good, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Barrows, even in your absence here. Uh, we have a presentation by uh, Chino Hills Vice Mayor Ed Graham, who is also a senior field rep from Assemblyman Kurt Hegman's office. Please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I have certificates here for all the parties involved, so I'll hand those out later. Um, Assemblyman Hagman just wanted me to remind all of you that if you've not been to the Museum of Tolerance in L.A. or Washington, you need to go. Um, truly two incredible museums. And I tell you, it's pretty cool seeing so many students here. So thank you for being here today. And thank you to all the parties involved, including the city of La Habra for sponsoring it. Thank you. We have a statement, a short one, to be read by Mr. Ted Gover from Alain Luray, who is the president of SNCF America, the donor to the exhibit. And Mr. Gover will read it. It is my honor to work closely with the Foundation for California and the Simon Wiesenthal Center to bring this exhibit to the La Habra Library. 
I want to thank the La Habra Library for kindly hosting this exhibit. What an opportunity and what a mitzvah. Some of you may be asking yourselves, why is the French National Railway sponsoring Holocaust education in Orange County? As some of you may know, SNCF, the French National Railway, participated in the deportation from France of 76,000 Jews and others to death camps during the Holocaust. As in other occupied nations, the Nazis commandeered the French rail facilities and used them for their evil plans. SNCF has dedicated itself to Holocaust education and to supporting worthy programs of remembrance and education. Our efforts help to strengthen the Shoah Memorial in Paris, Remembrance Memorials in France, Yad Vashem in Israel, and the joint efforts of the Simon Wiesenthal Center's Museum of Tolerance and the Foundation for California in providing this traveling exhibit to venues large and small. I am the child and grandchild of survivors, so I know from family history the horrors of the Holocaust. Human beings are capable of extraordinary things, both good and bad. We believe that education offers hope and is the only way we can create a better future. So thank you for your interest in Holocaust education, for your support, and for being here today. Thank you. We have another uh, proclamation, and I'm delighted uh, that the mayor of Stanton, uh, David Shaver, is here to make the presentation. David, please. And David just showed me the real reason for these proclamations. He was using it as a fan, and it worked wonderfully well. <laughs> I'm honored to be here today to represent the city of Stanton. Um, I want you to know that um, the reason and the way in which we learn, because I've been a teacher for 42 years in the classroom, is we learn by stories that are told and are passed on down. I was very fortunate. Ed Roy Sr. served on Stanton City Council until he retired recently. One day Ed said, Dave, come on over to the house. I want to tell you some stories. I said, okay, Ed. I said, I, you know, I was in the war and I remember a lot. So I went over to his house. He opened his book. He showed me all his treasures. And the one thing that he showed me was the concentration camp that he visited. And he was the first American soldier to walk in that day. And he showed the pictures and he told his story. And it was a remarkable story because it was the truth, it's what actually happened. And he had not only his wisdom and storytelling to pass that on to me, but he had the actual pictures. What's going on today is another step in the story that needs to be told. And therefore, I do congratulate you and I'm very honored to be part of this exhibit because this exhibit is just another way to tell the story so that it lives on and people can learn. On behalf of the city of Stanton, my city council and my com entire community, I want to give the Foundation for California, the Simon Wiesenthal Center and SNC a yay yay for the courage to remember. To the city council, we hereby recognize and commend all of you on the work that you have done and honors your efforts in working so tirelessly to enhance and strengthen the quality of the Holocaust education across this country. We have a number of dignitaries here today. I'm going to read their names. Unfortunately, I cannot ask them to speak because it's time to end the program. <laughs> but I want to thank the following dignitaries who have joined us today. Uh, Carolyn Ben Natan, she's Director of Public Affairs the Council General of Israel in Los Angeles, Alexander Gerfinkel, Office of Assemblyman Isidore Hall, Philippine Council General M. Helen uh, Barber de la Vega, Caesar Angeles, Information Officer, Council General of the Republic of the Philippines, La Habra Heights Councilman uh, Kyle Miller, La Habra Heights, not the same thing as La Habra, I believe, no. yeah. <laughs> Council Member Jane Williams, Westminster Council Member Dana Carey, Your Belinda Council Member Eugene Hernandez, Jessica Wu, Office of Irvine Councilwoman Christina Shea, La Puente Mayor Pro Tem Violetta Lewis, Helen Freed, 
County Librarian, Orange County Public Libraries, Anna Figueroa, by the way, will you give this nice lady in the green dress a raise? She deserves it, please. <laughs> and Anna Figueroa, District Chief of Staff, Office of Congressman Lucille Royal, Roy Ball Allard. Is she here? Because I knew Congressman Woman uh, Roy Ball's father many years ago. Uh, Joe Manriquez, he is the Senior Vice Commander, Jewish War Veterans of Orange County. The Council General of Hungary, Laszlo Kalman. The Deputy Council General of Hungary, Oliver Pinter. Dr. Robert and, uh, and uh, Larice Singer, Trustees, Fullerton Joint uh, uh, Union High School District. Uh, Dr. Surin van der Yats, a Council for Economic and Community Affairs, the Council General of Armenia. Uh, Igor G. Shatkar Ul, Vice Consul General of the Russian Consulate in San Francisco, and his fiance, who I'm particularly happy to welcome, Irina Korch. Uh, we have Arturo Garcia, who represents Senator Bob Huff. We had students, we have students from Sonora High School, from Troy High School. Fantastic. You deserve a big chair. And we have Andreas Linz. Uh, Council and Acting Head of Post for the Consulate of Austria. To you excellencies who represent your countries here in California, to you who are honorable made by virtue of your election to public office, and to those of you who joined us. And by the way, I didn't add Rabbi Milhander from Temple Beth Tikva and Rabbi Lawrence uh, Goldmark, uh, who used to be the rabbi uh, for all the reform rabbis in Southern California. Oh, Mayor Ron Garcia from the... Ron, where are you? Right very good. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ron. I want to thank you all for being here today. We now have our last speaker, me. I'll only say one thing to the young people. Today, young people, it is very popular for people to go out and say the Holocaust never happened. Holocaust denial is a mother's milk of terrorism. Terrorists are nurtured on Holocaust denial, and Holocaust denial is also used to undermine the legitimacy of the state of Israel. So there is a great battle going on, and therefore it's important for you to understand what happened, when it happened, and its meeting during the Holocaust. Young people especially, thank you for being here. We're now gonna have a ribbon cutting. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready to cut the ribbon, to officially open this exhibit. And I get to do the countdown. Count fast. That's all right. Five, four, three, two, one. The exhibit is open. Thank you all for being here. It is so important that we do remember and that we teach our young people to remember and to know it and to go and tell other people who haven't seen it or haven't heard about it, about it. because if we don't, we're going to go right back to the way we were in 39. That is a terrible time. I lived through World War II. My husband had received a Bronze Star. He is deceased. And we lose those people hundreds every day. And we're losing the people who know about this. And we've got to let our young people know. This is the museum in LA. So when I saw the exhibit was going to be here, I even left work early to come because it's important. It did happen. I saw Leanne Lason speak at the Cerritos Library. He just recently passed away. He was a Holocaust survivor. He was the youngest one in the Schindler's List factory. So it's an incredible story that those people have went through. It's very sad, and the memory needs to continue. Yes. Hi, I'm Young Kim. I'm representing Congressman Edwards of the 39th Congressional District, and it's my honor to represent him and our office at this special Holocaust exhibition. As you know, history is a continuum. If we don't get the past right, we can move forward in the future. And uh, the exhibition reminds us of what happened in the past. And don't let anyone forget that such atrocities occurred in the, uh, during the World War II. Uh, I was very honored to bring uh, photographs of the uh, photos that were taken 
in late 1945, in April, when Congressman Ed Royce's father, Ed Royce Sr., was a part of the effort to liberate the concentration camp called Dachau. And he apparently had a camera with him at the time, and he was able to capture a lot of the photos that shows dead bodies. The train that transported a lot of the uh, bodies, ovens filled with bodies that were being burned to death. I mean, these are the issues, these are the things that actually show you. So don't ever, ever let anyone tell you that these things didn't occur. The denials that to this day they say it didn't occur, I ask you to please come to this exhibit and see the photos and find out for yourselves that this thing actually happened. And let's move forward by learning from what happened in the past. Thank you very much. Well, myself as a Vietnam veteran and having experienced uh, these types of situations, as many of you know, there was the Cambodian Khmer Rouge that happened. Uh, it reminds me and it reminds all of us that these things continue. The Holocaust happened 50, 60 years ago. I am the son of a World War II veteran. My father, in fact, was in Germany. Unfortunately, he didn't get to go to those, facil those places. My father uh, served in World War II. He served in Germany. He didn't go to those facilities, but he did tell me of the Holocaust and the atrocities that were done. So it's important that we have the children today remember these things because, at, as they say, one day they will come knock at your door. So thank you very much for coming to the city of La Habra in Orange County. On behalf of the citizens of Brea and the entire city council, we thank you. My name is Jeff Decker. I'm a professor at Whittier College, and I'm um, director of our leadership program. And uh, it's very important that we have this exhibit. It's very important for the young people to learn about it. Um, it's, a, it's a dangerous world that we live in, and to equip ourselves so that we understand the responsibilities of freedom. In fact, that's, I say the purpose of a liberal arts education is to equip our students for the joys and responsibilities of freedom, and certainly that follows from what we learn here today. So I'm a senior Vice Commander, Jewish War Veterans, 0760 of Orange County. And um, the uh, exhibit here is very, very impressive. And uh, I've seen other pictures like this before, but worse. But this will do, because uh, you, have, you can't be showing kids everything. They have to find out for, for themselves. You know, sometimes they have to experience it or just uh, take the history books, word for it, that, that it's right. And um, hopefully it'll be car carried on that uh, the Holocaust did happen. It happened to more people than what they think. Six million was the round off. But uh, Joseph Stalin killed 15 million, which they don't talk about. When you go to Auschwitz and you see the pile of ashes, can you hear them talk? Listen to the wind, whispers in the wind. They say, take us home. Take us home. How can they? Take us home, they say, to the nation of Israel. Drop us off so we can rest in peace with our people. I haven't seen it all, just read some of it. And I'm just astonished that anybody could say it didn't exist. That's just... I can't believe it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shannon Athenrod. I'm a teacher at Sonora High School. I teach sophomores in European history and these seniors in the IB seminar course. And the importance of this exhibit is just there's a lot of photographs and powerful speeches that really the students can connect to. Of course, I teach this in my curriculum, but um, I think the powerful images that are present here we can't really replicate. And just the story behind how this exhibit made it here and where it's been around the world, I think, was pretty powerful to the students as well. Oh, I think it's very important to remember it because of all the um, people that are denying the Holocaust. That's a tragedy right there. And, and unfortunately, there are a lot of people in the world that actually believe the lie. And um, this, this kind of uh, uh, display will help educate people and right the, whoever was speaking I didn't see who it was talked about the youth needing to know this which is very important you definitely need to know so they can not become part of the lie of denying the Holocaust
Well, we talk about the courage to remember and the courage to stand up. And when I think back on those people who were in the resistance, you know, I wonder if I would have had that courage to stand up and resist. And I think it starts with being courageous in little things in your life, standing up to bullies at school, standing up to the injustice that you see in everyday life, being honest and fair. I'm a Girl Scout leader, so I have to think of that. Um, this exhibit helps us to know that how important that is to keep, keep that courage up in the face of things that happen in your life and things that happen in the world so that you have that courage when the big things come. And that as a library, we are here to empower and enrich our community, to share information, and to give them all points of view on a subject, not just the popular ones, because in the United States, we don't have a party line. We are not told what to think. We are told to think for ourselves, and I hope this exhibit helps further that. It's important because you never, ever want to see this tragedy occur again. Not because it's still happening. We have to always uh, be willing to make the hard decisions to uh, take the, sometimes the, the best road is not the right road, and uh, we're doing it now. That's why Congressman isn't here. Thank you. Well, for me it's kind of a personal thing because I was born in Germany, and so Marianne gets, and uh, I, when I see this, I could think, you know, except for the very fortunate foresight of my father who left with us to England, like this could have been me. You know, I was, so it, it becomes rather personal. Actually, it, luckily, none of my family, some of my grandparents stayed, but they, my grandfather died a natural death in 37, I think, and my grandmother and my aunt were able to leave Germany in 1938, in the nick of time. My father brought them over. But, uh, you know, so it, it, this is a very personal thing for me. It really is. It just, it could have been me. This was excellent exhibit. I love to see these young people here. My dad came from a large family. He emigrated to the United States when he was a teenager. He never spoke about three brothers that he left behind in Europe. And we're sure that those three brothers <coughs> were killed in the Holocaust. And so a program like this is very important. I was happy to see all the young people here. And uh, I've been to the Simon Wiesenthal. I've been to the museum in Washington, D.C. And they're all good to remember and bring back memories. But I'm afraid that in the future, when our generation is gone, even our children don't have the same feeling for the Holocaust as we do. And so I'm sure that as time goes along, it will be lost. And it's exhibits like this that are helping to remember. What amazes me is the denial that some people have about that the Holocaust ever existed. I was just saying that a personal acquaintance of mine just a month ago uh, questioned me as to why I did not know more of my ancestors. And when I explained to her that they were left in Europe and during the Holocaust that we, we have surmised that they're gone, she said, oh, uh, are you aware that many people do not even believe that the Holocaust ever existed. And I don't know what to say to these people. I mean, I, I see exhibits like this. I've been to the different Holocaust exhibits. I've read books. And I can't believe that a, a rational person in this day and age could even feel that this did not occur. So I'm glad, I'm glad the kids are seeing this. I'm glad they're 
learning about it. I think it's wonderful that they're giving up their afternoon and coming here. It's a wonderful exhibit that you're doing that. Signed up in, in a, um, I, I transferred to Montauk Junior High School in Brooklyn. Nobody told me in seventh grade you have to take a language, so I took Spanish. Because these kids wanted me to play with them. I, I didn't. By the end of the summer, I also spell my name without an I or a Y, because I was told in America you can spell your name any way you want, phonetically. So they said, is that how you spell it? I said, yeah, that's how I spell it. You know, they said, hey guys, her name's Elaine. And so I contracted, by the, end of the, by, by the end of the summer, I knew a few words, you know, I learned. And I, I, I said I'd play with them. They desperately wanted me to play. But I will say the flowers or the cars or whatever the heck you have to say in those boxes in Yiddish. None of them spoke Yiddish, and I never lost a game after that. <laughs>